And so remember, doing the exercise is this, it is in fact ego lifting. Coach Greg, in today's video, we're going to go over Sam Sulik's leg day. And in this, we're also going to be discussing the importance of doing cardio. And so I've already watched the video. And throughout the video, Sam brings up many great points of which I want to address. And so let's get right into it. I'm a bit irresponsible with my time management. Rather than just try to do a little bit of both, I'd rather just totally thrash quads. Better to do some than none. And so due to poor time management skills, Sam doesn't have enough time to get through his entire workout. And so he's decided to hit quads and to skip his hamstring. He states it's better to go and at least do something than to do nothing and skip the entire training session. And I have to 100% agree. But what I don't agree with is him skipping hamstrings in favor of him training quads. If anything, it should be the exact opposite. Almost everyone, and I do mean almost everyone, has better quads than they do hamstrings. For the most part, people neglect their hamstrings way more often than their quads. And why is that? Well, because you can see your quads in the mirror. How often do you look at your hamstring from the rear? Not many people are are able to see their hamstrings they don't actually see them work when they're in the gym and in comparison people can see their quads and so it's much easier to train and focus on your quads and your hamstrings and so if you have to skip one i would suggest to skip out on your quads in favor of doing your hamstrings also way more often that people pull a hamstring than pull a quad hamstrings are way more important way more often neglected and so that is what i would focus on unless you're perhaps an anomaly for example coach right my hamstrings are better developed than my quad and so if i'm going to the gym because my hamstrings are better than my quads, I would in fact skip out on the hamstrings and train the quads instead. But there is in fact a much better way. A best of both worlds, a compromise so to speak. You can very easily train both your hamstrings and your quads at the very same time. And so if you're short on time, why not just select exercises that you do for the legs that focus on both? For example, squats, hack squats, the leg press. These exercises, especially if going to 90 degrees or going through a full range motion, most certainly are going to train both. Sam, on the other hand, he's going to the gym. He's going to focus on leg extensions. And in particular, he's going to do one leg at a time because he's so strong that there isn't enough weight on the machine to train both legs at the same time with enough intensity. But again, there are things you can do. You could, for example, use bands. For example, when training legs with Eric Jadicki, we added bands because he could very easily do the entire stack, increase the range of motion, slow down the speed of the rep, and increase time on tension on the muscle. And so in these instances, when you don't have the time to fully do your entire workout, why not just focus on the most intense exercises that do both the quads and the hamstrings? And if there isn't enough weight on the machine, for example, when you're traveling down south on vacation, training in a hotel room, why not simply add bands? You can make the exercise more difficult than last time. Doing some Smith machine squats once my quads are already pumped. Pressing when your quads are already pumped. It's almost a completely different sort of feeling. And I have to agree with Sam, I much prefer training my hardest exercise first. For example, I'd rather start out with doing squats than starting out with leg extensions and then doing squats because it's much more difficult to lift heavy weights when your legs are tired than when they're actually 100% fresh. But I do see a case of doing it the opposite. If you warm up the quads by doing leg extensions first, you decrease your strength. And so when it comes down to doing squats, whether it's Myth Machine, regular squats and so on, you're gonna use a lot lighter weight and avoid having to eagle lift. But remember, there are other ways to avoid eagle lifting than having to pre-exhaust your muscles first. You can simply slow down the range of motion, go through a full range of motion, pause the weight at the bottom, and concentrate on the muscle that you're lifting while performing the exercise. Also, increase the amount of reps you're doing. Far often, people lift with way heavier weight than they need to, and they don't focus on the time under tension. That's the tut on the muscle. And so why not time your sets? Have you ever timed a set? Literally, go do a set of squats, press the start button, and see how long it takes. My general advice is for most people, most exercise, somewhere between 40 seconds up to a minute, that that is a great time of tension. Some people people like Eric Janicki, they're going on for two and even three minutes. To me, that is a little bit too long. For most people, that's going to be a long time. You can try to progressive overload, try perhaps one or two sets with that length of time under tension. But for the most part, you don't need to do sets of two to three minutes to build muscle. But if you're trying to avoid eagle lifting, make it safer, do sets approaching a minute rather than sets of 15 or 30 like seconds. Let's say you're going into chest and you want to do flat bench. If there's a bunch of people on flat, you've got no access. What are you going to do? Are you going to have a constrained mindset? 
and just sit there patiently and wait for the bench to open up. Sam also brings up a great point. If the machine you want is busy, why sit there and wait for them? Why not just do an alternative exercise that's similar to the one that you're doing? I often do coaching plans. People say, oh, the machine was busy. I had to wait 20 minutes to do my exercise. Why not just do an alternative exercise? It's okay to vary your exercises. It's all right. You don't have to do the exercises exactly as listed on the program. You can even switch up the order. Why not go and do the next exercise? exercise on the list and go and do that previous exercise immediately after. It's okay. You might not be able to lift this heavy weight because you're pre-fatigued, but that's all right. The next workout, perhaps the gym won't be as busy. You can get going and doing the program is state. No, no, no. Instead of starting off with double leg, the stack is like just too light. So I'll start off with single leg. And rather than doing one leg at a time, he could literally just slow down the movement and pause the weight at the top. Hold it for three seconds. The increased time under tension, under load, especially while the leg's completely extended at its weakest point, perhaps, that is going to be harder than last time. And so why not just use two legs, slowly lift the weight up, squeeze hard at peak contraction, and then slowly lower the weight twice as slow as you raised it. That is going to make the exercise probably two, maybe even three times as difficult as simply swinging the weight up as fast as humanly possible. And so remember, doing the exercise as this, it is in fact ego lifting. It's easier, it's much easier doing it this way than it is to slowly control the weight. And so if the weights are not heavy enough, make the exercise harder. Try doing your exercise like that. Instead of thinking I need to get 10 to 15 reps, think I have to get less than 10 reps. I'm gonna make this so hard that I give up at nine. And notice just how hard he's training. He's clearly going to failure and beyond. And so regardless of how he's doing the exercise, whether he's using perfect technique or not, when you train this hard, you're bound to make some gains, assuming you don't get injured. And so I'm not trying to say he should stop training the way he does. I'm not saying he's not doing anything correctly. He's clearly training harder than last time. But if he wants to be more efficient in his workouts, he could in fact slow down that range of motion and really feel the exercise, feel the mind-muscle connection. And so notice after he does one leg at a time on the leg extension, he then does both legs at the same time, gets a little bit over 15 repetitions, but hardly any of those reps were to full extension. And so is he really that strong or is it simply this strong because he's cheating out by using partial range of motion? I would much rather see him go through the full range of motion, really squeeze at the top, and then after he reaches failure, he can then do his partial reps. I would say if he was doing the exercise correctly, probably would have got eight good reps, then perhaps could have got five, six, seven partials after that. And just look at the sweat coming off this guy wearing that orange shirt. He's sweating profusely just through the shirt. Me personally, I believe in staying cool during the exercise. If you know Coach Greg, you know I walk around with a fan. The cooler you can keep your body, the more power you're going to put out. If you're overheated, sweating harder than last time, you're not going to be able to train as hard. And therefore, you're not going to get this many gains. And a lot of people, they judge their workouts based on how much sweat they're getting. You need to stop thinking like that. If you're exercising hard in a very warm room, for example, I did hot yoga this morning, I was sweating everywhere. But just because I was sweating profusely doesn't mean I was burning more calories or getting a better workout than during the bike race I did this afternoon. I most certainly burnt more calories during that hour-long bike race than during the hour and 15 minutes that I was doing yoga at our studios here in Halifax. I just ran down from the last two sets. I only did nine total, so I cut two at the normal. And so he did nine total sets of quads. And remember, he didn't have enough time to do his entire leg workout, but he did nine sets of quads. What would make more sense to you? Would it make more sense to, for example, do five sets of quads and five sets of hamstrings, perhaps going from quads to hamstrings back and forth, allowing his body to rest between sets? While doing his hamstrings, it allows him to rest his quads, then switches over to doing quads, giving his hamstrings a break. And so he wouldn't need to rest very long, perhaps one minute, would have had plenty of time to train both hamstrings and quads. And if you're asking me, training this difficult, this hard, going beyond failure, he wouldn't need to do nine sets. You don't need to train this hard every single workout in order to make gains in the gym. So I believe the best course of action would have been for him to train both his quads and his hamstrings and to just alternate doing quads, hamstrings, quads, hamstrings, back and forth, five sets of each. Ugh. 
do a little breath hold to get the veins popping out. And so Sam brings up a good point. If you're flexing your quads, if you've got a fully developed pump, you're not going to see as much definition and detail as there's so much blood rushing to the muscle as it actually blurs out some of the striations, cuts, detail, and so on. And the same applies to the triceps. And so when we're pumping up for bodybuilding competitions, we're not doing a bunch of squats and we're not doing tricep press downs. We want the triceps and the quads not to be pumped up, but we want the back, the chest, the delts, biceps to have a massive pump. That allows you to look full as a house on stage with all the detail necessary to win a bodybuilding competition. I'd say just for general lifestyle purposes, I'm probably a bigger fan of fall ish. I don't really like just being sweaty. And so isn't it a bit ironic that he says he doesn't like to be sweaty. He prefers the fall weather of the summer. He doesn't want to be hot all the time. Yet he's training in a sweater and jogging pants and that is going to make him sweat more and be much warmer than if he were wearing cooler clothes. And so I do believe Sam would have a better workout if he were wearing perhaps a tank top or moisture wicking clothing. And so don't think that you need to cover up and get a big sweat in order to get a better workout. Also, if you sweat like crazy the way I do, nothing wrong with carrying a fan. Fan is going to cool you off, going to make you feel better. Perhaps you'll go that much longer in the gym. In particular, when you're doing cardio, it's much better to have a fan to cool yourself down than trying to sweat through an entire workout. If you have to change shirts after you do your warm-up cardio the way I do, much better to bring a fan with you. Keeps you cooler, allows you to work out harder. And so please take my word for it. Sweating harder than last time, it's not a necessity when you're training in the gym. And in fact, keeping cooler is going to allow you to have a, a better workout than last time. I'm going to get home and get the cluster dextrin shake going. I didn't fucking make it. And so he's saying he has to rush home to get in the cluster dextrin, the carbohydrates and so on. I do believe that's because he's taken insulin. I don't have proof. I don't know for sure. But there is no such thing as an anabolic window. No matter what Sam is stating, there is no actual research stating that you need to consume protein and or carbs immediately after a workout. Now, if you were training fasted, you haven't eaten in four or five hours, then absolutely important to get in your nutrients after you go out to the gym. But if you're having a pre-workout meal or if you've eaten a couple hours before training, there's absolutely no benefit or necessity to slam back a whey protein shake immediately after the gym. I'm probably more so a believer than a disbeliever. Sam is more of a believer than a disbeliever in this. But remember, he is perhaps taking insulin and he is not 100% natural. And so perhaps for him, he needs to ensure that he gets in these nutrients to prevent from going hypoglycemic. I'm sure he has a plan. He does, in fact, know what he's doing. But if you're a natural athlete just going to the gym, don't think that it's as soon as you finish your workout that you need to consume carbs and or protein. Now remember, this advice I'm giving to people who are going to the gym and lifting weights. If you train for an hour, an hour and a half, perhaps you're burning three, four, maybe 500 calories. That is in fact not a lot in the grand scheme. For example, when I'm riding my bike for an hour, I'm burning approximately 1,000 calories, probably double what Sam's burning during his workouts. And so it makes much more sense for someone like me doing cardio, burning an extreme number of calories to consume food following my workout. The reason for that is as Sam describes. If you've burnt off all your fuel, you need to replace it. If you have a car, you went for a 500 kilometer drive and the tank's on empty, you gotta get some gas. But if you have a full tank of gas and drive to the local grocery store and back, you don't need to put more gas in the tank. You're good. You know, there's a lot of shit you can do, which I think a lot of you are slacking on just because it only offers you marginal gains. Yeah, I don't really do cardio. That's a classic, you fucking asshole. And so Sam brings up a great point. A lot of the things that people avoid doing, they avoid them because it's only going to give marginal gains, perhaps 1%. 1%, not really noticeable. But imagine skipping out on all of them. Or imagine adding 10 different things that offer marginal gains. 10 things that help you 1%, well, that's a 10% improvement. And so if you're looking for things that can give you marginal gains, consider harder than last time supplements. For example, pre-workout, GO2 Max, ActiBuilder, Creatine, Beta Alanine, the list goes on and on. And these things can and will make a very big difference in your training. For example, I bike raced yesterday. I got fifth place. Guess how much I lost by? 0.29 seconds. That's less than 1%. If I could have gone 0.29 seconds faster, difference between fifth place and first. And so all of these extra supplements can make a tremendous difference. And so if you're like me and you're trying to get the most out of your training, you're trying to be the best at cardio to live the longest, healthiest life, do not skip out on all these things that make marginal benefits. And as far as cardio goes, it's a must. Anyone that's avoiding doing 150 minutes of cardio a week that goes to the gym and lift weights, what's wrong? 
wrong with you? Why are you skipping out of this? 150 minutes out of an entire week? It's only about 1.4% of the time here on this earth that you have to do cardio to improve your life. And so if you can't sacrifice 1.4% of your time in order to have a long and healthy life, then I have nothing for you. What am I supposed to tell you? Doing cardio, it's not going to improve only your quantity of life, also the quality of life. You're going to feel better, enjoy life more, and so please do in fact give your cardio. Sam is a firm believer in cardio, and this guy, he's bulking, has a horrible diet, yet he still knows the importance of doing cardio. Why the fuck aren't you taking creatine, man? A more ATP production, bro. Technically, you'll hold on to more water, but it's not like you're going to be fucking watery. That's not going to fucking change the way you look. So great point Sam makes about creatine. Creatine does in fact help you to build lean muscle. It actually adds body weight. A lot of it is in fact water, but it's water in the muscle. And so if you have more water in the muscle, the muscle is a bigger muscle. And considering the muscle is about 80% water, why not increase that percentage? You'll look more round, more full, and you're not going to look bloated. Many people think, oh, I took creatine. I'm looking soft. Bull freaking shit. Clean up your diet. I understand the arguments of you don't want to be dependent on it. How do you get to work or school? Do you walk there or do you, or do you drive there? Do you rely on a fucking car to get you there? You know, relying on shit is not inherently a bad thing. And saying you don't want to be dependent on something and and reason not to use it. To me, that seems a bit ridiculous. He points out you use cars to get to the gym. You depend on that. You depend on a bed to sleep. You depend on food to give you energy. So what's wrong with depending on a pre-workout or something to give you energy for the gym? And so what? Once in a while, you forget. You go to the gym. You perhaps have less energy. You still go to the gym. You still get your workout. And perhaps it's not as hard as it could have been, but it's still a workout. And then the next day, when you go to the gym with your pre-workout, you'll then train harder than last time. And so it's no big deal. If you forget you take your creatine every now and then, you forget your protein powder, your beta alanine, pre-workout, GO2 max, you name it, it's okay. Let's say you're not even, let's say you are seriously concerned about the caffeine. You know, it makes you just fucking, you're just crazy sensitive to it. Get a stem free pre. And so if you are in fact concerned with your caffeine intake, you perhaps are training later at night, you can of course use pre-pump. It's stem free, still gives you a great pump. And so, and so this to me, a great choice for people who train later at night. And me personally, I take the hardcore pre-workout before I go to the gym and I consume this during the gym. I get my stims, amps me up for the workout. And while I'm training at the gym, I consume this, continues to give me a great pump from start to finish. Dude, I know for a fact you're not getting a fucking vitamin rich diet if uh if someone were to test your blood highly thoroughly you, you got some deficiencies i can guarantee it and shocker sam is in favor of using vitamins minerals supplements to that extent but remember this is a guy that lives on chocolate milk cinnamon toast crunch donuts burgers and fries and so obviously the guy's going to promote having vitamins and minerals and so on and of course we think of everything of course we have a multivitamin i personally don't need it because of course my diet is amazing you know my diet's amazing Amazing. I follow so many recipes from my cookbook. How could it not be amazing? And not only that, I don't just eat meals from my cookbook. I'm out eating restaurants. Last night I had three appetizer, three mains, and a dessert. But I'm racing bikes. I'm doing cardio. And so I burn off. And so I maintain single digit body fat while being happy and healthy. And so why not get my cookbook? 3.0 amazing recipes for the big eater you're going to be able to lose weight stay in a deficit and you're going to in fact love your diet not like it liking it that's all right you're going to love it if you're interested in this or any of my supplements don't forget code reg 10 percent off click the link in the description you're doing your cardio is fucking good for you you're not meant to just get on Fortnite for eight hours a day you know do your office job for whatever you know it's, you're not just meant to sit and so I love the fact that Sam is such a big believer in promoting cardio. I mean, other than myself, I don't know anyone who promotes cardio as much as Sam does. He says the body is not made to just sit around, to just sit at an office and work all day. We are meant to get up, move around, and explore the world. We have evolved to do so. We have an amazing energy storage system. It's called body fat. This is so that we can go days, weeks, perhaps even months without eating food. We have an efficient energy system, and the more you use it, the better you get at it. You become a better butter burner. If you continue to do cardio on a regular basis, going harder than last time for months and or years, you're going to become amazing at it. I can burn almost double the calories I did when I first started five years ago. Be consistent, continue to push yourself to go harder than last time, and you too can become a better butter burner, be a leaner, healthier version of yourself. And remember, it's not about being perfect, it's about being better than you are. Can you do better? 
better tomorrow than you did today? And can you do better today than you did yesterday? All of those things, they're not gonna double your muscle gain in one year. You take one guy with creatine and one guy without. You take one guy with pre-workout, one guy without it. And so remember, taking all these supplements from Coach Greg or any other person, it's not gonna double your gains, but these marginal gains, they all add up and can make a very significant difference if you continue to use them. You don't have to use them. You can, of course, do everything without taking anything. But if you're trying to get the most out of your training, you're trying to be the best version of yourself, I strongly suggest you give some of my supplements a try. And remember, don't forget, if you enter code Greg, you save 10%. Click the link in the description. Let me know how you make it. Subscribe and click the bell button. No wonder everyone's a fan of Sam. This is a great guy. Love his videos. I highly suggest you go and subscribe to his channel. Ending it here. Cookbooks, training books, coaching plans by me and my team, the harder than last time clothing line, the circle diet book, and don't forget to watch one of those two bloops, at least one. And until next time, I am out.